Hi everybody, in this tutorial we're going to uh, recreate the payroll query that we, working, we were working on in class. And also I want to give you a couple of ways to enter the uh, <clears throat> formulas in the, in the query and how to get around some of the quirks uh, that can happen when you're working with Microsoft Access. Okay, so first of all to create the query, go to our Create tab, <clears throat> and we want to use Query Design. From here, we're going to select our tables. We want to use the invoice table and double click it, the employee table, invoice details table, and lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, the item master. Okay, and we can close this and we can see all our tables here. Okay, so we want to have an idea of how we want to build our query from left to right and how eventually we want it to look on the report. So we want to start with the date. So just by finding the date of sale in the invoice table, we can double click it. Then we want the employee name. We want the product name, or pardon me, for payroll, we just want the quantity. And we want the retail price. Okay, this is all we're gonna need to start uh, building our table, our query. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna calculate the gross pay, which is a commission, <clears throat> so we'll select the column immediately to the right of retail, and we will go to our builder, expression builder, right up here. Now, a couple of things may happen. Uh, if we open up, expand our uh, Microsoft systems, and expand on our queries, we're working on query one, we can see here that the, nothing is showing up in the expression categories. Now, we can go into creating long forms, but sometimes this does come up, and what we can do is we can save the query, close the program, and reopen it, and these will reappear. I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then if it happens again, I'll show you the long form uh, formulas to put in here. So let's just close this for now, and we are gonna right click, we're gonna save this query, or we're gonna call it payroll query. Okay, so we've saved it. We will close it. This is a new file, so I'm gonna save it. So I can open it again, save it, all right. I'm gonna close the file, and I'm just gonna go back up and reopen it again. There it is. Okay, so let's go back and reopen our payroll query. Okay, and we'll go into design view. And we're gonna start here again. We're gonna go just to the right of retail, select our builder. And now we can see magically our expression categories have shown up here from the query that'll make our calculations that much easier. All right, so for the commission, we're just gonna take, um, this is going to equal, in bra open brackets, the quantity times the retail price, close bracket, and if you recall, we're paying commission at 5.5%. We'll select okay. We'll format it as currency. To save time, I'm not going to go to the trouble of naming all these fields, but again, as I mentioned in class, it's very important uh, when you're up here that you, you uh, follow good naming conventions. And we're just gonna change this now from expression one, and we're gonna call it gross payroll. Okay, and we'll right click <clears throat> and save. We have to save after each step when we're building a query <clears throat> so we can continue to uh, build on it. So let's take a look at this at our data sheet view now. And now we can see we've got our gross payroll. We'll open this up. We don't need to see this any longer, the quantity and retail. And um, yeah, you don't necessarily have to show these. Uh, you can still perform these functions without these, but for the sake of learning, um, I wanted to include these here initially. Go to that pop up. So anytime we decide we don't want to see a specific row, we can just go in here and deselect these boxes, right? And then what'll happen is once we go back and we rerun our data sheet view, you can see those are gone now, okay? All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna calculate the federal tax on this payroll. So we'll go to the right, 
to build an expression. Click on Builder. Everything still appears here, which is great. So now I can just select my gross payroll times the federal tax amount that we're using is 6.4%. Select OK. Format its currency. Great. And we'll change expression one to read Fed tax. Save. Let's take a look in design view. Or pardon me, data sheet view. There we go. So we've got our federal tax calculated. Now we want to calculate our provincial tax. Same step. Go to the column immediately to the right. Our expression builder. Again, we'll take our gross payroll. And the percentage on the provincial amount that we're using is 3.9%. Okay, currency, wonderful. Save the file. Data sheet view. Oh, I've got to change the uh, heading on that. Go back to design view. And we're going to call this, oops. we we'll just call this prop tax. Okay, so I'm going to move right along and build the uh, last two expressions, one for Canada Pension and one for Employment Insurance. Go back up to my builder. And I'm going to take the gross payroll. And CPP is 4.5%. Okay. And we're going to name this CPP. And lastly, we'll do our EI. Take our gross payroll again. And the EI is 1.6%. And it's in currency. Give it the EI title. All right, so let's save and go back to our data sheet view. And we've got everything here that we're going to need for our payroll query. Now, I wanted, in case you're having issues and you still cannot get these um, expression elements to show up, I'm going to show you the longhand formula and then you can just copy it over. Okay, so go back to design view. And then what I'm referring to here is like, for example, when I scroll over and I want to build a query here, and I go to Builder, the query that I'm working on, this payroll query, all of the elements of that are all showing here in the expression category. So it makes it really easy just to click on, for example, the, cal the gross payroll and, and figure out the tax amount. Sometimes, um, if you cannot get these to come up for whatever reason, you have to put in sort of a long formula to do that. So that's what we're going to do here. We have to use the amounts off the table. Okay. So to do that, we're going to have to expand our tables, right hand side, and we're going to need our invoice detail table. Okay, there we are. So we're going to put equals, open bracket, open bracket. We have to have double brackets here. Okay, we're going to take the quantity. We're going to multiply that. We'll go to our item master. We'll select our retail close bracket, and we're gonna multiply this by 5.5% because of the commission. Then we're gonna put a closing back bracket. And now the last uh, element that we need here is we have to calculate the federal tax. And we're gonna multiply this now by 6.4%. Okay, so again, this is in the event that you cannot get these expressions to show up in your category. So you'll have to calculate your federal tax and your other elements the long way uh, by expanding on these tables. So that formula is just double open brackets, invoice detail table, quantity, times the item master table retail, close bracket, multiply by 5.5%, multiply by 0.64. Now to save time, I'm just going to highlight that entire formula. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to hold down my control key and hit C. And I'm going to select OK here. And just so you can see this, I'm going to name this 
fed tax to. Okay, it's already currency. I'm going to save it. And let's go to data sheet view. Okay, and now you can see my column here, federal tax to. These amounts, okay, are exactly the same as the amounts over here. All right, in this federal tax, this is the one that we created when we had all the uh, all the elements and the expression builder from our query made it very simple. We just multiplied the gross payroll by 6.4 percent, and we got this. In the event that you don't get those elements show up, you have to put in the long formulas. You still end up getting the same result. It just takes a little while to get there. One more example. Now that I've copied that formula, it's going to make the rest of the calculations much much simpler. So I'll go back to design view and show you one more. And now let's say I got to do the provincial tax the long way. Okay. Again, if you recall, when we calculated the provincial tax, the you know we had this uh, these expression categories from this query that we're working on show up here. So if you've saved your file, closed it, reopened it, and for whatever reason you still can't see these, this is when you have to use your tables <clears throat> and create the long longhand formulas. Let's go back here. Well, now we don't have to actually go uh, and expand these anymore because we just copied the formula over from the uh, federal tax. So I'll just click in the expression box and just hit Control V. Now I've got my formula exactly the way that I want. The only thing that needs to be changed is this percentage on the end. The federal tax, as you recall, was 6.4%. The provincial tax is only 3.9. So I'll just back up, put in 3.9, select OK. And for illustration purposes, I'm going to call this PST, or pardon me, PST, uh, Prevent Prop Tax 2. Okay, I'll save it. And let's have a look at the data sheet view. Okay, and here we are. Now, if we take a look at our, um, uh, where's our other provincial tax? It's not showing up here. Let's go back to our design view. Oh, I deselected it. So I got to put this check mark back here. There we go. And data sheet view. All right, so here's our provincial tax. And now you can see we have exactly the same amounts and the long formulas. <clears throat> so I hope you find that was helpful. There's always a way, a work, a way to work around some of the glitches that uh, come up in any software. Um, so with that, I'm going to conclude this video, and in the next one, I'm going to show you how to convert this into a usable payroll report for HR.